So we're going to be looking at a third um, quote from the book, Wisdom Keys, like we've been doing in the last few days. Today is uh, a quote from a, a different chapter, and it says, Most of the knowledge and information in the world makes no contribution to your life. Be selective and narrow your focus to things that matter. Now, I think... This is perhaps one of the most important lessons that I had to learn. Um, I heard something from uh, the CEO, the former CEO of Google, Eric, uh, Eric Smith. Apologies if I didn't pronounce his last name correctly, but Eric is his first name. And Eric said that from the, the time when we started gathering data or recording data up until I believe it was 2013 um, I believe I'm not sure 2013 or 2003 he said that we were creating more content in terms of information every day we were creating more information than we had created since the recording of time up until 2003 now that's powerful. That means that information is not our problem. I think we just have too much. And here is my recommendation to you is if you want to be successful, if you want to be happy, if you want to be healthy, you've got to understand the power of purpose. And purpose is simply the original intent, the original reason, the design and the thoughts that was in the mind of either the maker, the thought that was in the, in the mind of the person who manufactured something, or the reason is the why. And all of us here have a purpose in life. We have a unique purpose um, that no one else can do but us. You know, there are 7 billion people in the world today, but none of us is like you. You've probably heard me say this so many times. 107 billion people have lived and of the 107 billion people who have lived none of those who came and who've moved on were like you or um, could even come close to being like you now long after I'm gone and long after you're gone the world will continue and there will be a few more billions but there still would never be another like you now that says that you're significant now, your significance identifies a point. The point is that there is a, a reason that you're here. There's a why. Now, because you're so unique, it means that there is an area that you can perform your best in. A fish, for example, has a level of um, genius if you observe it in water. I love going to the, uh, the Red Sea in Egypt because I go diving and I love to snorkel. Um, but when you go deep sea diving, you get to see the beauty of what we call um, the universe, the beauty on the water. But you see all these fishes of various types and you can see their genius because they're in the right environment doing what they were created to do. The same fish, you put it on land, you bring it above water level, and it starts to struggle because it's outside its environment. If you keep it too long outside water, it dies. The same thing applies to all of us. We have what we call our strength zone. And we have areas where our weaknesses, if you want to use that word, um, reveal themselves. And it's simple. We're not meant to be in every single area or environment. There's a specific area where our purpose um, is meant to be fulfilled and in that area the strengths we have come alive now what am I trying to say here just like you have a purpose there is an ability that is assigned to you the potential is unlimited the ability is connected to a gift a talent a skill but to get that talent skill or gift to its highest potential you have to do three things. You have to study, you have to practice, and then you have to live it. Now, you're not born, you know, fully talented. You have to develop yourself into greatness. 
Greatness lies in each and every one of us, but it has to be developed. Now, by study, it means you have to spend time gathering knowledge, seeking understanding, increasing your awareness, and that requires selectivity. Now, this is where I've come back to the, the, the quote I just mentioned. That requires selectivity. So, there's so much information around. I'll give you a classic example. Today, I, um, I don't spend my time, zero time, learning things that I don't have a passion for. I'm very clear now what my purpose is. I'll give you a good example. I, I worked and I studied engineering. And for 15 years, I worked in, in building design and construction, um, building great buildings all over the world. Um, it was, at the time, something that gave me a lot of joy. And I worked up until, you know, levels in terms of position that very few would ever get to reach. Um, successful in my own way, but in my own capacity. And I haven't reached the highest well, maybe not the highest. I probably could have gone higher. I decided, no, actually, I didn't decide. I fell into the truth of my real purpose in life. And I decided that I would leave engineering and pursue my purpose. And ever since I made that decision, I have never looked back. I, I still invest in property, but I never use, I, I, I almost never use that knowledge I acquired in engineering. Why? Because now I know what my focus should be. I know where my strength zone is. So for example, I don't know how to repair cars. I'm not gonna study how to repair cars. I'm not gonna read books on how to repair cars. Why? I'm probably never gonna use the knowledge. So my focus is only about spending time on things that can help me become a better person things that can help me fulfill my purpose, things that can help me help others. And that is all I do. And that's what I want to recommend. And that's what this quote is saying here. Number three says, most of the knowledge and information in the world makes no contribution to your life. Be selective. Narrow your focus to the things that matter. So ask yourself this simple question. All of the books you read, all of the magazines you read, all of the conversations you have with people, all of the things that are taking your focus. Remember, wherever focus go, your energy goes in that direction. All of those things, are they helping you become the person you should be? If the answer is no, then maybe a reality check is needed. Where you just sit down and say, am I spending my time on the many things that don't count and not enough time on the few things that really count. You see, because we have such a limited time, 24 hours every day, but you know, life in itself is short. And so we want to maximize our life and use it to the best of our ability. Don't be efficient, be effective in life. It's a big difference. Efficiency and effectiveness are different. You can be doing things right, efficiency. Or you can spend your time doing right things. Effectiveness. Effectiveness has to do with purpose. Passion has to do with focus. Efficiency just has to do with you just being good at anything you see. Now, the more time you invest in your strength area, the better you become. The more time you spend randomly on other areas of life, the more you get almost a mediocre level of performance in so many things, but not, a, not enough for you to become a master. You see, mastery is the key. If you want to become a master and an excellent in what you do, you need focus. You're going to have to let go of all of the distractions. And in, let me make a point in saying this. Not all distractions are bad. There are good distractions, but they take you away from your true purpose and focus. And I love what Steve Jobs used to do with his um, chief design officer back when he was still alive. He would walk up to John Ivey and say, how many times today have you said no? You know, Steve was obsessed about focus because he would say, it's not about 
selecting great ideas and saying yes to great ideas. It's about saying no and staying focused to your vision. And so my question to you as I concluded this, do you know what your vision is? And this is your vision in all areas of life, you know, relationally, um, health, business, um, fitness, spiritual, you got to know your vision. You got to know what you want so that as you walk down the streets of life, you do what Paul said. I don't look to the left. I don't look to the right. Forgetting the things that are behind me, I move towards the end. I move towards that vision I have. You're not distracted. You see, the enemy of great is good. The enemy of great is good. You can be distracted from becoming the great person you were born to be simply because you entertained distractions. So as I conclude, I want to encourage you by saying this. You can achieve, you can be, you can do much more than you've done so far in life. You can have a really fulfilled experience. But to become your best, you must go for mastery. You must go for excellence. You must become focused. And you must develop that part of you. That part of you that enables you to stay locked into a particular area is part of your higher faculty. It's called your will. You've heard of willpower. Well, when you hear willpower, they're referring to your higher faculty. Uh, there are five higher faculties. There's imagination, reason, intuition, memory, and will. Your will is that part of you that allows you to completely focus on one area or one thing. Like a laser, you focus. You must become someone that has a laser-like focus. Now, as I finish, it's exciting. I heard of a story where Bill Gates and Warren Buffett were at a dinner party. Um, and the dinner party was being hosted by Bill Gates' mother. Now, I don't know how true this story is, but I, I've heard it from so many sources. And I, you know, it doesn't, in, in an interesting way, it would, it would seem true because of the content and um, the, the, the words of wisdom in it. And Bill Gates' mother asks a question to all of the audience. She says, what's the key to success? Without consulting each other, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates said, focus, almost simultaneously, focus. Can you stay focused? And that's what I want to leave you with, focus. Now, what is focus? In my book, in this book, I say focus is simply, now I believe it's, I don't I don't know if it's this book, um, could be, or one of my other books, but I say focus is your ability to flourish in one course until you're successful. Flourish in one area of commitment, rather. Flourish in an area of commitment until you're successful. And that's what I want to ask you to do. Make a decision that you're going to focus. Forget all the information Forget every piece of information that doesn't help you become the best you and channel all of your focus towards anything that helps you become your best self. I wish you the best.